everybody, welcome to Paramecia, a One Piece fan cast where we review the latest chapter of One Piece and have a different One Piece related discussion every single week. My name is John. My name is Franz. And we're on break this week. Hey. <laughs> um, so what we usually do here on Paramecia is every time there's a break week, we usually have a sort of extended discussion on a topic, usually not related to what's currently happening in the story. We'll jump jump around back and forth. Sometimes, like, uh, the last ones we have were, like, about Reverie, Wano. Um, we had, like, a top three favorite arcs. Like, we just kind of jump around everywhere. Um, this week, we kind of touched on it in the last episode. We're going to be talking about how to get into One Piece slash how to get your friends to get into One Piece. Basically, how to trick yourself or how to trick someone else into loving this long-ass piece. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Yoda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so what we're going to be doing this week is we're going to be giving a couple of like tips either for for you the listener or for you to pass on to your friends cuz like you know, so many people in like the One Piece fandom have this whole thing where they're like, "Hey man, you should read One Piece." All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to go pick it up. Like, "Uh, what chapter is it on right now?" Oh, you know, last week was just chapter 895, bitch! And it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's a recurring thing. I do want to, like, make the fact apparently clear that uh, One Piece is a, is, a, is a monster of a series. Like, it would, it would be the same, it would be the equivalent as right now in, like, you know, right now, this, today trying to catch up and read all of naruto like there's so many chapters you would be like you know you'd 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 be like you'd be freaking out if you if you're trying to push yourself to like catch up to the current one and that's completely false you know you you don't have to cat like when you're reading one piece or getting into it i i want to iterate like you don't have to you shouldn't feel like and you don't have to feel like you have to catch up immediately like that's there 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 shouldn't be a sense of immediacy when you're trying to get into one piece just take it at you know your own pace and kind of conquer the mountain as you go yeah a, a lot of a lot of people have very different ideas about one piece but something that i feel that a lot of people don't really understand even like longtime fans don't necessarily understand that one piece is a lot more like episodic than you would think Granted, there's oh, a huge sure. deal of like world building and everything is interconnected in a bunch of different ways. That's personally my favorite part about the series. But you can definitely take it as it goes and just be like, oh my god, this place is cool. This place is cool and all that. So we're going to be discussing several different ways to consume One Piece. Yeah, um, I think the first one we should probably touch on is... The the age old debate, <laughs> the, the debate that's been around since the Stone Age, manga versus anime. <laughs> oh God. Um. So yeah, in my opinion, I yeah, as a kid, like I watched a bit of One Piece, but like when I like sat down, I was like I'm gonna do One Piece. I read it all because in in my mind, I was like. I need to like speed run catching up. So like in uh, sitting through 20 minute episodes or reading a chapter that takes me like 10 to 12 minutes, which is faster, of course, reading the chapters. Yeah. And I didn't have to deal with like filler guides. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we should start with that. Uh, so manga versus anime. There's really, there's no right answer. I guess it depends on, on, you personally 100 um, percent. i i personally like manga just in general more because most of the time with any with any show that i've watched or like the example i'll use right now is uh erased when the anime came out in like a couple years ago 2014 or something no nah, a couple of years ago but not 2014 i don't think no shit i don't know when i'm, I'm a scrub yo don't don't mind me Anyways, when the anime came out, I remember watching it, and it was really well done. Like, you know, cinematography is out of this world. Like, the, the, the framing, and there's so much so much good about it. But when I went back 
like a year later and I revisited it. I watched it again, but then I found the manga and I read the manga and oh my god, at least to me, like I feel like the manga just hit a lot of story beats way better. Welcome to our erased <laughs> podcast. But that that's that's pretty much my my personal thought process on a lot of these shows. Like if there is a manga, I'll watch the anime and I won't hate it, but I would prefer to read the manga because most of the time that's the original media and that's just what I like to consume. But I will say the One Piece anime, you know, it's it's Toei, so there are some, like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are some pacing issues. Like, it's, uh, it's the same thing with, like, Dragon Ball Super. Like, it's unavoidable. Like, there are pacing issues. And budget issues, too. Like, Toei's yeah. unfortunately, like, not known for being that great of a production studio. But, you know, there's no need to be so nitpicky. If you sit down yeah, and, like, yeah. watching anime instead of, like, read, Like, personally, I'm dyslexic. I am borderline <laughs> illiterate. And by all means, most of the time, I do prefer um, watching animes as opposed to, like, reading manga. I don't really read manga other than One Piece and a few things that I, like, translate myself. But in, in this case, it was, like I said, I just wanted the speed run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You want you wanted that any percent <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and welcome to AGDQ. And this is a uh, Franz Lashorn. Uh, he's going to be playing for us the One Piece any percent. <laughs> he's already well known for his Glitchless. hamburger any percent glitchless speed run. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was so deep. No, um. Yeah, but I I will say just manga versus anime, they both have their own kind of benefits to both. Um, Like, for instance, the One Piece manga, something that doesn't really, actually hasn't been animated, I don't think. I mean, I'll, I'll stand corrected if it is, but the One Piece manga has, every chapter has a cover story. And the cover story is like, the title of the chapter is presented and there's a short drawing, like a one page drawing from Oda. And it's just talk. It, it, it portrays to the reader something that's going on in the world of one piece at that time, but it could be pertaining to any character. It's not just what's going on with the straw hats. Like um, the current where the manga is now, the current, um, the current cover story arc we're in is called it's the, the journey of the straw hat uh, grand fleet and it's following around the Str- the straw hat grand fleet members and what they're doing after the events of Dressrosa. so it's really it's really cool to like as you're reading one piece you know week to week you'll be getting you know you'll be getting luffy's adventures and like you'll be getting all of their like antics on like whole cake island let's say right now but at the start of every chapter you're also getting treated to like what Bartolomeo's doing after Dressrosa or what Leo is doing or how how Baby 5 is doing like you get all these really cool kind of one shot like glimpses as to, as to what these other characters are doing and i they, they don't have that in the anime i mean they they do to a certain extent because sometimes they take these um not all the time that is for sure but sometimes they do take these um cover stories compile them all into like one or two filler episodes it's something that um a good resource is i think it was animefiller.com that it details exactly what ranges of episodes are filler so it'll be like episode 52 to 56 is filler and whatnot and just like it'll like list it plainly like that or if you scroll down further there will be a complete absolute list of every episode with its title and it has a scale of like canonness, basically, where it's like okay. it's canon, cool. mostly canon, mostly non-canon or non-canon. So there, it, you do get that, but not as much. What you do get from the anime, though, is something that even manga readers go for: is all the fight scenes. Toei, a lot can be said about them. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, when they really need to get a polished product out for these fight scenes, 
they will go all out and it looks great oh yeah and they they for a lot of these fight scenes they'll put their best you'll you'll know you'll know an episode's gonna be hype when like the episode title comes out like a couple weeks beforehand and then you get to see who's the director on the episode because for these fight scenes they pull out some of their like all-star directors to like you know like really make the episode uh the fights shine like luffy versus doflamingo like oh man (laughs) that that's that that fight while being long the end of that fight like the final climax is just so so beautifully done (laughs) all of it's really good another quick thing on anime versus manga is when it comes to the anime you have to choose the other age-old question subs versus dubs (laughs) oh no and to that i will say um the four kids dub is actually hard to find and very irrelevant now as much as dub is actually the best one so seek that one out (laughs) um right now um funimation is doing dubbing work using a good cast of voice actors it's what's being used for most uh, all the media that's going out and it's being sent through hulu if i'm not mistaken and and through funimation's own website you you can also yeah you can also watch it on funimation now um they have the they, they obviously have the subs episodes on Funimation now every week, but they also they do the they release the dubs there. Um, yeah, I in terms of subs versus dubs for One Piece, I actually don't really care now. Like before before Funimation got the the license to One Piece, I would a hundred percent say oh subs because all we had was the four kids <laughs> dub and. God, I mean, the censorship alone was enough to say subs, because a lot of scenes My name's lost, Sanji, like... and I have the <laughs> same voice actor as the guy, Joey Wheeler. I think it was the same voice actor. and I, I don't know, it was some dude, the, the Brooklyn act, like a, such a fake Brooklyn accent. Hey, Nami. <laughs> but, but that's a, like, honestly, we could go, like, make an entire episode of just, like, industry-wide, not just One Piece subs versus dubs, but that's not what we're about. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to say, like, just to end it, like, before I would have said, you know, obviously subs, but the Funimation dub, I've watched a lot of scenes, like, dubbed. It is really good. Like, the, 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 the voice actors they got for each character just fit. And it's, it's, it is a really good, uh, they really capture a lot of the moments that I thought they wouldn't have been able to capture, so... I'm a believer now. You can really choose whatever you want. I don't. <laughs> as long as you watch it. <laughs> um. So our next point on this, what um. Jonathan. Yes. What is our next point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good thing I have it written down. <laughs> no. Yep. No. Uh no the night I I just I we should just go into to help people kind of understand how to get into it I feel like we should just talk about how we did it okay yeah 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 because I know we we both did it pretty differently yeah um, um I guess into it I talked about it a little bit already so I'll go um a little yeah. more into detail so like I said my goal was to speed run it I only read it. I've watched very few episodes, mostly, like, fight episodes or, like, episodes that, like, my little brother was watching that I, like, passively watched. But I sat down. I don't even remember when the fuck this was in my life. I don't know if it was, like, during a college semester or if it was during, like, summer break. I don't remember. But No, it was definitely during a break. I want to say it was, like, a winter break or something. Okay, like, yeah, that, that makes more sense. But... I sat down and I told John, I'm going to read this shit. He didn't believe me, apparently. I found this out last week. But (laughs) I sat down and read it all in ten fucking days. I did not leave my house. I (laughs) surprisingly ate. I went to sleep at like four in the morning every night, still reading. 
But granted, I didn't do this like forced. I was hooked. So it, it, it definitely was an enjoyable experience, but it's not very sensible to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the only person I know that's done this. Um, our friend Victoria, she basically did the same exact fucking thing. She just binge read it, I remember. <laughs> like, Dude, I don't remember if she beat me or not. She might have done it in like eight days or something. I, I don't know if she beat you. I, I, we'd have to confirm with her I, I how many days it took. But I can't it, remember she, if she beat your record or not. All I remember is like picking her up to like hang out like one day and then two days later we hung out again and i remember i asked her like oh how's it going and the answers i got were very far apart (laughs) from like where she was in the story and i was like whoa (laughs) dude she's a fucking beast of course like uh she that was her being like i have no time before med school i need to get this done now so that (laughs) that was part of it a hundred percent so that Again, Victoria is not a great, like, yardstick to compare yourself to, much like me in this case. (laughs) So, let's go on to more normal ways to consume this, John. How did you get into it? So, I've, I've kind of said here and there before in a couple episodes prior that, like, I, I kind of started, like, just... So originally I started by watching like if I'm going starting from zero I started watching the four kids dub and then later on I got into like watching the Funimation dub and then just reading it and at the time I started reading it it was like just before the time skip um it was I think it was like at Marineford or like yeah yeah the first episode I watched or the first <laughs> chapter i ever read like when i decided to read it like every week was the chapter where uh bartholomew bartholomew kuma separates the straw hats and then the chapter ends it's like and on that day the straw hats were defeated (laughs) and i was so mad because i thought i was like did this what the like what the hell like did it just end and i (laughs) hell yeah yeah, I started from there reading it every week, and then as <clears throat> as I started reading it, I um I just kept up reading it like just just from that point, and there was obvious parts that I was missing because as I read it, there were certain characters introduced that I either remembered from a long time ago, but I didn't know that much about. Like uh, I remember getting into Impel Down. And Crocodile was introduced. But then we also got introduced to Mr. Two and Bong Clay. And I was like, I remembered them, but I, I couldn't, like, really remember their story arc. Fucking um, real. Yeah, so that's that's where... So I, like, started in the middle of it. And then as I went along reading it, I would, like, if I didn't know a character that appeared that week, like, I would wiki it. And then I would read the character and be like, oh, okay, they came in, uh, you know, they they came into the story in Alabasta. So then I would go back and, like, work through Alabasta as I was reading the weekly release. And I, I kind of jumped all over the place, but I just literally just jumped into it, started in the middle. And anything I didn't understand, I would go back and, like, as the weeks were going, I would work through the different arcs. And eventually I read everything, so... Here I am. <laughs> exactly. At some point, that's all that really matters. Yeah. We we have a couple other friends that have like read most or all of One Piece. Um one example would be Gustavo. I don't I don't know how long he took to like read it or I don't know if he, I don't even remember if he watched it or read it. But I remember that Ooh, That's a good question. He, Anyways, he binged it. Like, yeah. like many things, he binges a lot of things. It's his joy in life. So he, <laughs> he binged One Piece and then stopped and waited. He waited for more episodes, more chapters to release, pile up a little bit. And he binged it again, like, he binged that chunk fairly recently. And that's something yeah. that I personally wouldn't do because I have the memory of a fucking peanut. But... Yeah. It really works for him because that's how he really likes to enjoy a lot of different media. 
And then another example would be our friend Glenn. We mentioned him last episode, which is what kind of led to this is um, congratulations. He finally finished One Piece and he's starting to get his own friends into One Piece now. But I, I remember he started like last summer or last spring or something like that. And he he made the decision to watch it till there were no more episodes left. I think he made the decision to skip filler as well. And once he caught up with the anime, I told him what um what episode linked up with what chapter, and he started there and finished it. And honestly, he he really enjoyed it. Like. It did take him a while. He, like, put it down at times and then picked it back up for, like, bursts at a time. But that's, honestly, I think the most sensible way because that's real life, you know? Work, yeah, school. Yeah, ag- again. Like, see your it, friends. It, <laughs> yeah, again, it, it needs to be stressed. Like, if, you're, if you want to read, like, or if you want to catch up with the entirety of One Piece, like, it's not a thing that's going to happen in a day. But it even just catching up slowly like it it's such an enjoyable process like every arc has its really good moments like you'll find your favorite characters and you'll get attached to story elements and, and characters and boats and like, it's, it's it's crazy like, it's a really it's a really good uh obviously we can't praise it enough but it is a really good story that i feel like you should give a try we might be a little biased uh yeah just a little bit biased it's you know to each their own like granted there there are a couple of people like adri she doesn't necessarily like one piece all that much because like her whole thing is like granular character development that is like nitty-gritty whereas i would say one piece's focus while it does have lots of character development it's mostly on world building. It's about, it's about the lore. It's about the <laughs> lore. We're scholars here. Yeah. And so that's where there's like a little bit of difference in interests where like One Piece can provide in some instances, but not as much as she'd like. So it's still a case of to each their own. You might just not like One Piece. Your friends might, might not like One Piece. And yeah, please, yeah, dear God, be definitely... okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a thing of one like okay, One Piece. It definitely has character development. There are characters that have changed over time, but like the idea of the characters always stays the same. Like a character, to my knowledge, hasn't ever like drastically changed or done a one eighty on anything. So like there is character development, but it's very minute in dosage, if that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's that's the uh, best like, way to it put happens, it. Happens. But again, like the main part of One Piece is the world building and the lore. Like when you learn more about things that happen in the world, like that's what gets you excited when you read One Piece. A good example of this would be um, Zoro. And this basically includes no spoilers because it's not even fucking relevant. He (laughs) has no backstory. All it was is his friend fucking (laughs) fell down the stairs. She died and he got swords out of that. After that, he just became a little shithead. And then just went around. His friend died, and then he was like, well, <laughs> we had a dick measuring contest, me and her, and now that she's dead, I have to be the best <laughs> to honor her. And it's like, okay, like, that. that's literally it. <laughs> and, and three years later, he's basically still like that, but he has shown, like, some instances where he'll, like, put his pride aside. Very few, and it is some character development. But again, within 895 chapters, it's not that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I, and I don't want it to, to come up as... I definitely don't want it to come off as these characters are poorly written. Because oh, they God. really aren't. It's just Zoro, like, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. <laughs> no, every character has their, their shining moments. And, like, they have their character development. Um, Zoro does have some strong moments when he's talking to Luffy. Like when when Zoro yeah. is acting like the second in command. Like a lot of those moments re- are really nice. But yeah, it's like to compare it to another show that or a, another manga that's currently going on as well. Like 
if if you want complete like character development and that's all you want I would probably recommend like Boku no Hero. A hundred percent. Because that that's a show that it has world building, yes, but it's like kind of flipped. It's like the world building happens and it's cool and it's there and it's it's fairly deep, but on the forefront of it all is the character development, like getting, you know, the, the characters are so well written, and they but they also have so like a well. lot. Yeah, they have a lot of development and a lot of changes, and I think it's it's. It's just a matter of which what you like more. One Piece definitely has character development, but I don't I don't want to oversell it and say like, oh yeah, One Piece has like the best character development because it it's it's very like I said, it's very minute and like controlled character development. It's not it doesn't hit you in like big bursts. It's it's very over time. Yeah, and that's the reason why Adri right now is currently yeah. at, as we're recording writing fan fiction for My Hero Academia. Hell yeah. Man, nah, it's... One Piece is so good. <laughs> I just Yeah, One Piece is good. Piece. Episode over. Yeah, episode over, guys. Just fucking read it. <laughs> just fucking read it, you dick. <laughs> that's, that's what the episode's gonna be called. <laughs> okay, God. Um, what, What's our next point? Uh, The next point that I have written down here is... Um, time skip versus start of the steri- series. Okay. So in One Piece, there is a time skip that happens. It's a, it's a two year time skip, and two like when we come back from the time skip, the characters have new designs and they're in the new world now. But it's definitely people get confused when they start reading because. A lot of the th- like, okay, when people start to read, they when they hear about the time skip, they feel like they shouldn't start, they shouldn't read anything after the time skip because they don't know what happened before the time skip, and that's it's it's a valid point to make. Um, but I mean, again, just uh, my my opinion on the whole thing is just start wherever you want. Like, if you want to jump in the middle, like I did, cool. Like, if you want to start from the beginning cool if you if you want to if you want to start from the time skip and then kind of backtrack you know and read some of the stuff prior to that that's cool too but um i feel like the time skip versus the very start of the series argument is kind of null and void if you if you're just try if you're just starting to get into the series i don't think it really matters which one yeah you get into because like when it comes down to it, One Piece does provide a lot of flashbacks and does contextualize a lot of things that like happen from before. The only thing you wouldn't get is really like those like fan service moments when like a character like comes out that hasn't been in like in the series for like three hundred chapters, and you're like, oh my god! But like, I don't know. yeah, like an example I can think of off the top of my head is like. If you started, if you started like really recently, like let's say you started like, okay, let's say you started at the time skip and you just went full steam ahead and you're caught up till now. At the end of the chapter in Zo, when Vivi is revealed, oh yeah, and it it shows them going to Reverie, like that entire Reverie thing would just whoosh, straight over your head. You would not. You'd be like, who is this? I don't know who this is. Yeah, and and, and like, like to, to somebody who's all caught up, you, you know, you're 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 like seizing in the corner, like getting so hype, <laughs> foaming at the mouth. Yeah, no, we went like absolutely buck wild when that happened. But if, if you if you're not like understanding that, that's completely okay because at worst, like you just you know, I'll get to that when I get to it, and at best, you're like. I wonder who that is. You go back, you read the Alabasta arc, and then you're like, wow, Vivi's pretty cool. I can understand the hype. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with her. Yeah, let me let me introduce you all listening to the gospel that is the One, P- the One Piece wiki. Oh, God. The One Piece wiki is the greatest thing ever created. <laughs> it's... If you're trying to catch up to the series. I Hold on. Like, really quick, like, litmus test. Like, so every, every wiki has like a, oh, this is how many pages we have. We're fucking huge. 
kind of thing. They have like a counter somewhere. So like, where is it? Show it to me, you cowards. Okay, okay, okay. Show it to me, you cowards. <laughs> so the One you Piece wiki scum. has 4,959 articles that have been created since opening on February 14th, 2006. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> now, litmus test, Wikipedia. Uh, show me. Yeah, okay, so, you know, we say that One Piece is huge, One Piece is book wild. About 5,000 pages on the wiki. The Wikipedia has 140,000 pages on their fucking Wikipedia. So, at the very least, it's not that complex. It's long, yeah, yeah. but it's not fucking Star Wars Extended Universe kind of bullshit. Like, yeah, it's not Star Wars Extended Universe long. Where it's all fucking retconned right now. Oh, fuck me. Fuck that. <laughs> no, yeah, the, 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 I can't, I can't praise the One Piece wiki enough. Just, God, it's just, it's just, at least in, again, in my experience reading, like, just deciding to read week to week here, and then going back, kind of just reading about different characters and shit that I see, like, it's, God, it's just so cool. I don't know, I, I, I really enjoyed, like, reading about crocodile before i ever read alabasta and i was like oh man like a lot of this stuff sounds sick and then when i went back and read it i was like oh my god like this stuff is so sick yeah that's a really like good experience to have honestly because it really fuels you to like continue reading this goliath of a fucking series yeah it's okay to get hype over it like hype yourself up if that's what it takes yeah on the topic there are some keywords that we feel oh, that yeah, yeah. you shouldn't go ahead and even like type in the google search box like that's how quick you will get spoiled if that's something you care about yeah i i on the topic of of spoilers like the wiki while i do while i do swear by it like if you're reading it it should also be said about me that I'm a person that doesn't really, like, I, I'm not too, I don't really care about spoilers. So, like, if I read something and it's, like, a spoiler to what's going to happen in the arc, like, to me, that I, I don't really care because majority of the time, like, something you get spoiled on is, it's, it's not really, like, it's not a sixth sense spoiler. Like, if, you know like if if you watch the sixth sense and you know the twist at the end watching it again any time after you've the first time you watched it is not the same experience like it's not <laughs> like it's it's a good movie still but it's like oh man like that totally like that spoiler just ruined like a lot of the stuff there was one time i don't remember with what but I do remember at some point John telling me, don't spoil me, you bitch. And I've never feared for my life as much as that time. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck, what was it? You know what? It was probably, I want to say it was probably Persona 5. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. It was either that or another game. going into Persona 5, I got so lucky to not be spoiled. And as I was playing it, I literally, like, radio silence. I think that... The, the next time I talked to you guys after the release date was, like, literally two or three weeks after. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So, like, that yeah. that's how John operates with spoilers. But the way I see it and the way a couple of other people that have that we've mentioned before that have finished, um, the there are some key things that, like, spoiled them. And they were like, oh, damn. One very common one is... Ace. Ace is a character. Very lightly put, he is Luffy's brother. Don't Google yeah, him. Just don't don't Google him at all. He's like, really cool. You, we love him. Don't Google him. Yeah, if you really don't want to be spoiled, like it cannot be like let's just run through the list real quick. Uh Ace, Blackbeard, uh -huh. Sanji. Sanji. I'm trying to think of other, like, major, major ones that, like, shouldn't be. 
Uh, Gold Roger, I guess, because he's so, like, tightly wound with, like, so many important things that eventually, like, you will fall into a rabbit hole of, like, oops, oops, oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are, like, the main biggest ones I can think of right now. It's, uh, like, Ace, Blackbeard, and Sanji. Because there's a lot of stuff about those characters in particular. Sanji was very recent that, like, all of this stuff kind of came to light. And it, the entire fan base was just like, whoa, like, this, it was, like, no exaggeration. The, the thing with Sanji that was revealed was literally, like, 20 years in the making. Yeah, like, that's like, absolutely insane. Like, after it was revealed, people were... When it was, like, teased, people were going through and, like, finding little hints that Oda left. And they were like, is this, does this mean something? And when they finally revealed it, all of that was true and it was mind-blowing. So, like, I won't say anything more than that. Just know that don't Google those names because they, they have a lot of important story, like, points uh, connected to them. But getting spoiled on those story points really does like even somebody like me that that you know doesn't really care about spoilers these spoilers are like off limits like these ones will actually ruin your kind of like reading experience yeah man because like uh another appeal to one piece and we feel that like the world building really like lends itself to this is like theory crafting this is why we do this podcast this is like why we do a lot of the things is why we talk about one piece so often it's because like when we're teased at things the first question we ask is why followed by who what where when and how and just like we yeah we search immediately for answers yeah uh, oda is definitely i mean i i i, I say it I've said it multiple times to you when, when we've talked about One Piece. It's like Oda, I feel, storytelling wise, is of the same caliber as like J.R.R. Tolkien in terms mm -hmm. of world building. Like you could fight me if you want, but you know it's true. Like he's yeah. What what what's his um Stephen Colbert? I'll give you my fucking yeah. address. <laughs> no, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stephen Colbert, come fucking fight me, you coward. <laughs> Oh my god. Actually, that's the title fight match that I really would love to see. Stephen Colbert <laughs> versus um, Roger's base. Who would win? Oh my god. <laughs> that would be fucking fantastic. No, I, it's... Yeah, it's there. there is so much world building. And the way Oda operates is he... He, he is honestly really, like, mastered the art of... Um, God, I forget what the literary tech. Yeah, yeah, I forget what the literary technique is called. It's like a. It's like somebody's gun or so, some a name like somebody's name and then it's their gun, which is the name of the device. Tim but Gun. It, it's basically, what happened? Tim Gun. Tim Gun. Yeah, the guy yeah. From basically, Project Tim Gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's 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 the 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 literary device. It's the idea that like when you introduce something and you call attention to something, it has to have some kind of relevance. Like you, you can't just bring something up. Like I think that what it was named for was if you, if you bring up a gun in a story if like, if you call attention to a gun at some point later in the story, the gun has to be fired or something has to happen with the gun. Because if it's, if nothing happens, then it's just a non-existent story element. It's like, you know, filler. Um, okay. But Oda really is, he's, he's such a master, honestly, at, at interweave in like weaving this into his story. Cause there's so many things that are brought up. Like one piece is, is the kind of story where like offhand, any, any sort of offhand statement from a character always, always means something. It's never like if a character just says something and they kind of like say it off to the side you can bet your ass in some way, shape, or form. It's very important. A lot of it is just, like, so fucking wild. Because, like, I I never thought that it would reach this point. Because a lot of times, like, shonen manga, like, 
it can be very <sighs> Naruto is a good example where Naruto has a bunch of great things about its world. It's very interesting. It's exciting. A lot of that. You get into the nitty gritty about it. Like, it's not that great. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely, it, it has its <laughs> flaws that are very, very big and gaping. <laughs> Starting with the fact that fucking, what's his name, John? Wait, who? The author. Oh, uh, Masashi Kishimoto? Yeah, starting with the fact that Kishimoto does not know how to write a fucking woman. <laughs> yeah, but I like Hinata, so I'll give him a pass on that one. Just that one. <laughs> That's fair and valid. Hinata's perfect. Fuck you, fight me. But yeah, um, do we have anything else to discuss? Um, because I thought of one no, thing. I, I like... mean. Yeah, the, the the spoilers was just a big point, really. Um, if you're the kind of person that doesn't really care about spoilers, then go fucking ham on on the on the wiki. <laughs> Read the um, wiki instead of the actual manga. Yeah, no, I I I I, I will just say that, that like like I described it, there are some spoilers that if you know them, they don't no just just knowing about it does not affect the way that you experience it like knowing i'll throw one out right here because it's not even like a stupid it's not even like a big like like knowing that luffy punches a celestial dragon doesn't make that entire episode any less hype like it's it's there's certain things there's certain spoilers that like even if you know them they're you know when you actually get to that part, experiencing the whole thing is like what makes it like the, the that. The context the won't is super it important for, for like a lot of those. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. But I mean, again, like we said, the big no nos, which uh, again, Ace, Blackbeard, and Sanji. Those ones are actually those are the ones, in my opinion, that if you do know them, they do lessen a lot of the impact of when it happens. Yeah. The only other thing that I do want to like bring up that is kind of off-putting to a lot of different people it's been off-putting particularly to women and it's incredibly understandably so the design of characters particularly the women in that fucking robin nami etc basically most of the Mm. main women are like a size negative 63 waist and like fucking J cup damage. <laughs> actually, hold on. This is low key how Oda is. There are cannon cup sizes. No, yeah, yeah. There, there are cannon cup sizes, and I don't want to get into it here. But like, I definitely know they exist because I am a wiki junkie. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. Let, let, let's not get into that. But but the point is like, as far as the character design, like. The moment you look at it without being like, without knowing anything about One Piece, the moment you look at Nami, you just go, "Oh," and that is entirely yeah. valid. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's it's definitely like nobody can defend it really. Like it's it's in it's a fact that just we have to deal with. Like yes, Oda designs a lot of his female characters like this yeah there are exceptions obviously but like the majority of them they just get this design but i do want to say like just just because he designs them that way i want to like he just because he designs them that way doesn't mean they're like bad characters simply because of their yeah their design. like nami in no way is a fucking like, nico robin is oh a my fucking god treasure Ni- tashigi is is a fucking fantastic character yeah and i like... I, I don't and nami is a wonderful character and like just because they're designed that way i don't want it to i don't want it to come off as like oh yeah like you know they have shitty misogynistic designs so they have to be a bad character it's like uh, like if you can look past the design and just watch the show for what it is like they're such good characters they're not like mary sues for the most part like they're really as for the most part they hold their own it's not to say that like women aren't also very powerful in this whole like universe it's just that like they look inflated 
It, that's Bob, that's Bob, something we've <laughs> that's something we've touched upon inflation porn um yeah uh, <laughs> yeah oda's a sick fuck <laughs> but on the flip side of that as far as shonen manga go one piece does have a lot of diversity with character designs also with women in that there are like no one calls attention negatively to like any kind of body types or anything there are when when you get past the initial level of just boobs eventually there are a few more things that a few more body types that are really good to see i really like seeing how he illustrates them because yeah. he does have a very unique style in my opinion and it lends itself to its diverse cast. No, yeah, yeah. One One Piece, like, God, there's so many characters that are so wildly different that it's it's such it's such a refreshing like anime to watch or manga to read because and you, you could fall in love with like any of these new characters that are introduced constantly and it's like damn like these these characters are so sick. One Piece is um, good. There's yeah. There's really not even, like, anything more I really have. The, the only, I will have one final point to talk about, because I, I do feel like if you're trying to get your friends into One Piece, I feel like this... She's a G-cup, by the way. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I would just say, if you're trying to get into One Piece... Like, if you're listening to this and you want to, like, make the effort to get into One Piece, I assume that you're already kind of versed in, like, what's going on. You might know, like, specific story elements. But if you're trying to introduce a friend to One Piece and you're trying to get them to really, like, show them why it's so cool and, like, kind of, like, ease them into it, if they have no knowledge, I will say the movies are a really good, a really good way to, like... yeah. I feel like the movies are kind of the best ways to, like, show a friend who knows nothing about One Piece how good One Piece is. The most recent movie is a good example. Yeah, uh, One Piece Film Gold was, like, amazing. The The relevance that it had to actual story was very little. And honestly, it's very watchable without knowing anything. My My, my dad went with me and my little brother, and he enjoyed it. He doesn't know shit about One Piece. Yeah, I, re- I like I remember we got to the theater. Shit, you were there too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there and I met up with you. Yeah, John's my dad. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just cut the episode there. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, yeah. I remember going to the theater and like watching it. Uh, with you guys and i remember like it was a really good movie but i remember getting out of the movie and like i was talking to to you and like your little brother about it and then your dad was like chiming in like oh yeah like this stuff was really cool like that character was awesome and then like i think there was a point where i think you and me brought it up one of us brought it up it might have been you but we were like oh like there was a part where zoro's fighting and we thought one of his like cursed swords was going to come into play because the, one of the guys, like, took his his swords. And then your dad was the one that chimed in, like, oh, no, like, I think that might have been, like, what was happening. Because, like, when Zoro has a line that's like, oh, like, this is good. This ain't, it, he, Your dad, like, reiterated one of the lines from the movie that, like, made perfect sense with what we were talking about. And we were like, oh, shit. Like, that's, like, like that's, like... Uh, our dad is secretly ghostwriting the entire script to all of our podcasts yeah (laughs) yeah no but it's it the movies are definitely like a really like isolated way to show somebody the best parts about one piece i mean off the top of my head film gold was really enjoyable i really liked the aesthetic and everything about it um strong world is also really good it's good strong world's even further disconnected from a lot of things yeah there was fuck what was the other one? Uh Strong World is really good. Film Z. Film yeah. Z is really good. 
film Z has a lot like all the movies have like really hyper crazy action scenes like they for the movies they pump because toy anim like the movies are toy animation kaioken times 20 like they just <laughs> their their budget knows no bounds but yeah I, if i had to recommend three movies it's probably those film fi- uh, film gold film z and strong worlds those are like ridiculously good movies but there there's a ton of movies that are out and almost all of them are like pretty isolated uh stories that you can just watch and enjoy without really having to know like a lot a lot about one piece yeah the only thing i would like add further to this is um if you have any further questions or anything please do check out this article on anime news network it's titled how to conquer one piece by sam leach question mark and yeah it's it covered a lot of different things that we talked about today not so specific but it really does bring into mind like there are different ways to enjoy one piece do whatever's good for you yeah and is this the episode uh yeah i'd say this is the episode um what's her crack theory yeah yeah i want to i want to uh yeah, th- we'll call the episode here, and we'll talk about crack theories, because when you get your friends into One Piece, you can then start forming shitty crack theories like we do every single week. Okay. Um, What's my crack theory? Okay, okay, okay. What's our crack theory? Our week? crack theory this week has to do with my dad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's your dad's pen name, Ichiro Oda. <laughs> Meta crack theory. Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah. Uh, John, do me do me a favor and sign us off, and I'll hit you with it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's gonna do it for us this week at uh, Paramecia headquarters. Not. <laughs> yeah no that's gonna do it for us this week at paramecia podcast um next week we come back from break so we'll be back with chapter 896 i yeah 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 896 we're coming back um hopefully we find out hopefully we don't skip away from the fight and we actually find out who won or lost um because i feel like it's time anyways here is the crack theory of the week so one day i got up at four in the morning from playing a bunch of League of Legends, went downstairs, and bumped into my dad. He was carrying a container full of notebooks, and I looked down, and all the notebooks had different names of different One Piece characters, and he hurriedly shoveled it all back into a container. He looked at me and said, You didn't look at that, right? And I didn't know what to do. I think... I think my father is... Eiichiro Oda. <laughs> Oh my god. Have a great week, everybody. (laughs) Oh god. Hey, your dad's a sick fuck for that inflation shit. (laughs) (laughs)